You will learn about Azure Front Door, the global layer 7 load balancing solution that comes with WAF Web Application Firewall and CDN Content Delivery Network. In Azure, we have four load balancing solutions. One of them is the Application Gateway, the Load Balancer, and the Traffic Manager. Each one of these services have its own set of properties. They differ on whether they support layer 4 or layer 7, whether they provide private or global load balancing, whether they support on-premise and other cloud providers, and whether they support host and path-based load balancing, TLS offloading, site acceleration CDN, and security features like the WAF. For Azure Front Door, it's a global load balancer. It means that it can route the traffic to multiple regions. It supports layer 7. It means that it supports HTTP, HTTPS with TLS offloading, and it does provide the CDN content delivery network for site acceleration. And it does also provide the WAF feature web application firewall to secure the incoming traffic. The main feature of Azure Front Door is that it can route the traffic to multiple regions. Those regions could be Azure regions or on-premise. This will enable architectures like implementing active-active or active-passive or the blue-green or the global applications. Azure Front Door is also an enabler for high availability applications and for data recovery and replication. Simply put here, you can de deploy your application in multiple regions and then configure Azure Front Door to route the user traffic to a specific instance or a specific region for your application, depending on criteria like the application that have the least connections or the application that have the better response time or the nearest application to the user and many more. Azure Front Door can route the traffic for publicly exposed applications through public endpoints through IP addresses or FQDNs, but it also supports private services. This works with services like Cosmos DB, App Service, API Management, Application Gateway, Internal and Public Load Balancers, VMSS, AKS clusters, and the on-premise networks. So with PLS, Private Link Service, you can publicly expose your private service through using the PLS private link service and also private endpoint. How does that work? So your private application, let's say here is for example, VMSS or a VM that will expose through an internal load balancer or web app that is injected into a virtual network or a storage account or an AKS cluster. So it will be exposed through the private link service. This will enable the creation of a private endpoint to connect to that resource. This private endpoint will be created by Azure Front Door. So you configure it in order to create a private endpoint that will be attached to the managed virtual network of the Azure Front Door. And then this private endpoint will be configured to connect to your PLS. And from PLS then can connect to your private resource. So this feature is available with the Azure Front Door Premium and you will need at the end to approve that connection from the managed private endpoint to the PLS. So this way you can implement TLS or SSL offloading on the Azure Front Door level. And the only way for users to connect to your application is through the Azure Front Door. And then you can add more security to those connections by implementing the WAF feature that comes with Azure Front Door. So there is no more direct connections from your users to your services without going through a secure service. So follow me next to see a demonstration on how we can expose some AKS applications using Azure Front Door and PLS. You will learn in this video demonstration how you can expose AKS applications using Azure Front Door and PLS Private Link Service. For this demonstration, we'll start first by creating an AKS cluster that lives within a virtual network, and then we'll go to deploy a sample application, expose it through a service, and then through using annotations, we'll go to create an internal load balancer along with a private link service that will be used for the Azure front door in order to get access privately to our services exposed within the cluster through the use of a private endpoint that is managed by front door and that will be mounted to the virtual network of the front door. So then at the end, the end user will be able to access our private services hosted within the AKS cluster through a public endpoint secured and globally available by Azure Front Door. The details of this lab are available on this GitHub repository. Go check it out. 
where you should find here all the details about the architecture and also the steps that you need to perform in order to create uh, the resources and also apply the right annotations on the services in order to create the internal load balancer and also create the PLS. For the steps of this lab, we'll go through these different steps. So first of all, we'll go to create a NACS cluster, deploy a sample application and expose it through an internal load balancer and a PLS. For that, I'll go here to search for AKS. I'll start by creating a new AKS cluster by selecting create a new Kubernetes service. And then I'll go to create a new resource group to host my AKS cluster. Let's call it RG AKS front door. Okay, for that name, then we choose the cluster preset configuration. I'll continue with the dev test as that's enough for this uh, demo environment. And then I'll give a name to my cluster like AKS-cluster. And then I like always to choose the latest versions of Kubernetes, but the version here doesn't matter actually. It doesn't have an impact on this lab. And then we'll go to next. We'll keep the node pools by default. And then for the networking section here, we'll go to create a VNet for this cluster. And we want to create it ourselves. For that, we check here, bring your own Azure VTL network. And then we'll go to create a new Azure VTL network. Let's give it a good name, like AKS-VNet, for example. And let's choose a custom CIDR range for that VNet, like 10.10.0.0 slash 16. And then let's create a subnet. Let's call it SNet AKS, for example. And let's give it another range, like 10.10.0.0/24. Click OK to apply this configuration. And then next here, I'll go to jump to the monitoring section and I'll go to disable Prometheus metrics as we just don't need it for this demonstration. And then I'll go to preview and create. And from here, I will validate and start the creation. The creation of the cluster will take about three minutes. Now, once the cluster is created, I can navigate to the resource group. And from here, I can see my AKS cluster. So I'll go there and then I'll go to connect my cluster by clicking on this button that will give me the AZ AKS get credentials command that I need to run in order to connect to my cluster. I run that command and now I get, should get access to my cluster. Then I can run commands like control get nodes just to make sure I'm connected to my cluster. After that, I want here to go to deploy a sample application. So I'll cre it will create its own namespace called web app. Then it will create a deployment with three replica and it will use the image from the inspector gadget that will show information about the environment in which the app is running inside. And that web app will be exposed through a Kubernetes service of type cluster IP. This means a private IP will be created for that service. So let's apply that YAML file through kubectl apply dash f then the name of the yaml file once it's created we should see some resources created you can check these resources by running kube control get pods deployment services from that uh, web app namespace and yes we can see the pods running and the service is running so here for kubernetes to expose its services to be consumed by azure front door kubernetes needs to provision an internal load balancer and a private link service. These resources could be created by annotations to the service that is exposing the application. Let's see how this works. So in addition to the default service that is exposing the application, we'll go to create another service. We'll call it Web App Internal Service PLS. And here what will change is that we'll go to add additional annotations. First two annotations here are to create a new load balancer. So note here Azure Load Balancer Internal equals true. This will make sure that this service will be exposed through a new load balancer. So a new load balancer will be created. And then the IP, the load balancer will be injected into the virtual network of the cluster. For that, it will take an IP address from the VNet of the cluster. And here we choose the IP address 10.10.0.25. Make sure that IP is within the subnet of uh, the cluster. And then the rest here will be to say here, I want to create a new PLS private link service. So when we say Azure PLS create equal true, then this means that Azure will create a new PLS service for us. And then it will be named PLS AKS service. And it will be injected into the cluster subnet, which is called SNet dash AKS. Remember when we have created that AKS cluster, we rename it that way. And then this will take one IP address 
and it won't use a proxy protocol and here at the end you have two optional parameters which are the visibility and the auto approval that should be used in order to automatically approve the connections to this uh, PLS without manually approving these connections on the Azure portal for some reason it didn't work for me so I go next uh, to manually approve these connections from the Azure portal simply so note that this service is the type load balancer so if I go to deploy this uh, service again using the command kube control apply dash f then the name of the yaml file when I do that here it tells me that a new PLS is created so if I do kube control get services from the web app namespace if I watch for that then here you can see now we have a new service with external IP address is pending the creation let's give it a few seconds to create and yes here we can see a new private IP address within the cluster subnet is created now we can go to the resource groups uh, the node resource group of the cluster that its name starts with MC by default and from here we can see that now we have new resources created which are the Kubernetes internal load balancer that will expose the private service and we can check its configuration so it's using a front-end IP configuration that is the 10.10.0.25 and the second resource created is the PLS service the private link service that uh, have an alias and that will be used later in order to provision a private endpoint to be used by the front door so as you can see for now it does not have any private endpoint attached because we didn't create one yet but we'll do that later with the creation of the front door another resource that is created is the network interface which is the network interface card that will be used by the PLS service great let's go now to test if the application is running correctly here so I'll grab this private IP of the uh, internal load balancer and then I'll go to here and create a new Kubernetes uh, uh, pod so I'll run here an Nginx pod and then I'll go exec inside that uh, pod and from there I'll just run curl for that uh, private IP and yes here I get the HTML coming from my uh, web application great so it's running fine let's now go to the part two of this demonstration which is the creation of the Azure front door and the creation of the private endpoint that will route the traffic to the PLS or to the private link service so let's go first create a new front door for that I'll go to the Azure portal and I look for the front door resource it's front door and CDN profiles and from here I'll create a new uh, resource by choosing Azure front door and then quick create process I'll confirm and I'll go next and then I'll choose a resource group for this uh, front door let's keep it in the same resource group um, as my AKS cluster and then for the front door to use the private link service feature it should use the premium SQ so make sure you select premium and then let's give a name to our endpoint let's say this is the endpoint for the AKS uh, uh, service and immediately a new endpoint will be created for me that uses the suffix.azurefd.net then next we should select an origin type it means Azure front door will connect to which type of resource so for my case here is PLS which is not in this list for that I need to select here custom and then we need to provide the origin host name which is the private IP address of the internal load balancer so that later when the connection comes from Azure front door through the private link service and then to the uh, network or to our virtual network it should connect to the internal load balancer which have the IP address 10.10.0.25 and then we can enable a private link from here right now but let's go to do that later so I'll continue here with these default uh, settings and I'll go to review and create seems I'm still missing some configuration yes of course I need to provide a name for my resource so let's call it simply front door and then go to review and create once that's validated we can proceed to the creation of the resource this will take about two minutes great now once the front door is created we can go to the resource group and from here we can see the new resource front door was created if I navigate there I will see from here the endpoints that are exposed so I can see here this uh, endpoint if I navigate to there then here I can see that uh, it gives me page not found because there is no applications available on the back end of this uh, uh, front door so let's create one what we want to do in our sample is that we want to expose this Kubernetes application through the private link service that will route the traffic to the internal load balancer so let's do that if I go here to the origin groups 
and then click on the default origin group that was created by default. From here, we can see the origin host name that we have created earlier that uses the private IP address 10.10.0.25. That's the same IP address we use it in our service to create the internal uh, load balancer. So that's good for me. And then here, configuration for the HTTP, HTTPS ports, and whether to enable private link or not. So here we need private link, so we'll go to enable it. And then here we need to specify where is the private link service, the PLS. So it could be in my directory, or I can reference it by its ID or an alias if it's in another tenant, for example. So it's in my directory, so I can just look for it from here. From this list, I can see that PLS AKS service. It will be deployed into the Sweden central region. I'm okay with that. And then here, the creation of this uh, private endpoint and to attach that private endpoint to the PLS, we need to ask for approval. And we can specify a message here that so that the uh, the provider or the approval can see that uh, message displayed. So here I say, please approve the private endpoint uh, connection. Then I select apply. And here we can check the configuration of the origin group. So it's using uh, health probes. I'm okay with that. HTTP or HTTPS. Yeah, good for me. So I'll go to click update. And now Azure will go to create a private endpoint, a managed private endpoint that will be attached to the virtual network of the Azure front door. And then it will go to create a connection to the PLS service that I've created on my uh, network. Once the updates are made right here, we can go back to the node resource group of the AKS cluster, then go to the PLS service and then navigate to the private endpoint connections. And yes, here we can see a pending connection that was initiated by the Azure front door. And here we can see the message that we have specified. So I'll click on that connection and then I'll go to approve. Not you can also reject or remove that connection. Let's hit approve. I'm okay to approve it. And now you can see that connection was successfully approved. So right now, the Azure front door should be able to connect to my application hosted within the AKS cluster through the private link service and through the internal load balancer and the private endpoint. Let's verify that connection. So I'll open again the uh, endpoint of the front door service, which is the same right here. If the URL is not working, actually, you need to go to front door manager. And from here, you can see the routes. So we have here one route for the service. And then you click on the default route right here and make sure that it's configured correctly like this. So make sure that in the patterns to match, you, you put the slash with the asterisk and that for the accepted protocols should be HTTP and HTTPS. And for the origin path should be the slash and then on the forwarding protocol should be HTTP only. Once we update these settings, then we go back to the website, hit refresh, then we should see that the web app is running and it's served by Azure front door. And that was how we can expose a private service for running inside an AKS cluster using a service, an internal load balancer, private link service, and a private endpoint. So this works for the private services, but it works also for the ingress controllers. And in the next video, we'll see how that works with an Nginx ingress controller.